This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be learning how we can use enums in Python. But first of all, to actually use an enum in Python, we're going to have to import it. So from enum, we're going to import enum. And with that, we can create a class that inherits from enum. And in this example, I'm going to be using a class called caller and that will inherit from enum. Now in general, you're going to want to use enums when you know that there's a fixed set of options, such as with a lamp, you can either have it turned on or turned off. That's a perfect place for an enum because it has two states that are constant, on and off. In this example, we're going to have some callers in our program, and these are going to be constant, such as red, which will be of type string and contain the value of R. This is a constant. Every time we use this enum, red should always be red. And then we're going to do the same thing for green and blue. Here I'll add a G and a B. So this will be our very first enum. Next, let's take a look at what this enum class actually contains. So right now, if we were to print the caller of the value of R, what we're going to get back is the red enum, color.red. We can also refer to color.red, and that's going to give us back this enum. If you actually want to get all the information back regarding the enum, you can print the representation of the enum. And that's going to tell us that it is an enum of the color.red that contains the value of R. Otherwise, we can duplicate that and type in color.red.name and color.red.value. And when we run that, you'll see that the name is going to give us back the name of the enum and the value is going to give us whatever that enum actually contains. So this is what the constants inside our enum class look like. But next, let's delete that and create an actual example. So here I'm going to create a function called create car. And that's going to take a caller of type caller, which will be our enum and it will return to us nothing because we will only use print statements inside here. Next, we can create a match case statement, so match caller, and do the following. If the case is caller.red, then we're going to print the following. A smoking hot red car was created. If the case was caller.blue, then we can print a slick smooth blue car was created. And I meant to make this an uppercase C. If the case is caller.green, we will print a calm and gracious green car was created. And finally, we'll just cover all the other cases, which are none. But in programming, sometimes you make mistakes and it's good to have a backup. So here we will print, we do not have the caller caller in our database. So obviously we cannot create that car. But now look how easy it is to create cars using this enum. All we need to do is type in create car, refer to the color we want to use, such as color.green. And when we run this, what we should get back is a green car. And what's great about this is that we know which options we can use. We have red, we have green, and we have blue. So these are the options that we can use when we want to create this car. We don't have to worry about spelling. We don't have to worry about uppercase and lowercase. We just need to worry about which constants actually exist. If we were to put blue here, we'll get a blue car back. And this is a much better option than typing in blue or using another variable and validating that with dot lower or whatever you use to validate random input. So that was a basic example on how you could use an enum. But there's still one more topic that I want to cover, and this is called flags. So for the next example, I'm going to remove this. And from enum, we're also going to import flag. And inside here, we're going to convert this to a flag or change it to a flag, which is a different kind of enum, which allows us to combine enums. So for this example, we're going to actually just remove all of this because we're going to create a slightly different approach. So here we'll type in red of type integer, and that's going to equal one, green of type integer, and that's going to equal two, blue of type int, will equal four, yellow of type int will equal eight, and black of type int will equal 16. What you should note here is that we're using the power of two for each value. And I'll explain why we did that in just a moment. 
Anyway, with this flag, we can actually create combinations of enums. In other words, we can combine these callers. So if we create a variable called yellow and red of type caller, we can add caller.yellow and caller.red together using the pipeline. And now if we were to print yellow and red, what we're going to get back is the mix of those callers back. And what's interesting about this is that we can actually iterate through it if we want to. We can say for caller in yellow and red, print caller. And that's going to give us back the two callers, caller red and caller yellow. But let's look at a quick example where this could actually be useful. So here we're going to create a variable called cool callers of type caller, and that's going to equal caller.red, caller.yellow, caller.black, all separated by the pipeline, which is actually just the union operator. And then we will have my car caller, type caller, which will equal caller.black. Now, if my car caller is in the cool callers, then we can print, you have a cool car, else we'll print, sorry, your car is not cool. And just like that, we can perform membership tests using enums. We can check that a certain enum is inside a group of other enums. And if we were to run this, we will confirm that I have a cool car because caller.black is inside this group. If my car caller was green, we would get back that I do not have a cool car because green is not in this group. So using flags is quite useful if you actually want to group or combine enums. But you're probably asking, why did I use the power of two for each one of these values? Well, to demonstrate that, I'm just going to remove these and I'm going to type in combination here. And we're just going to combine the color of yellow and red. Then we're going to print the combination dot value. And what you're going to get as a result is the sum of these two values. And luckily we don't have nine in the mix, otherwise the program's going to get confused and give us back the caller with the value of nine. For example, if we were to make black nine and we're just to print this combination, what we're going to get back is caller black because it looks for the value now when we're printing the caller. All this does is combine the numbers. While if we left this at 16, we would get the combination that we were looking for because nine does not clash anywhere in our enum. So using the power of two just helps prevent that mistake from happening. But doing this math manually kind of sucks. So there's actually another trick we can use. And to use it, we have to import auto from enum. And then we just need to use auto everywhere. Auto is going to auto assign a value to each one of these. So we don't have to worry about that. And to show you what it looks like, we're going to print the caller.red.value, and we're going to do that for each caller. So here we'll get green, blue, yellow, and black back. And now when we run this, we should see that we're getting these same values back with the power of two. And the reason it's doing this is because we defined this class to inherit from flag. So it knows that it needs to use the power of two for each one of these constants. Now, if we were to use the enum or inherit from the enum, it's just going to assign each one a number incrementally. Each value is going to be unique, but it's not going to worry about using the power of two for each one of these constants. But once again, the reason that flag is so cool is because we can actually combine constants. So we can actually add one more variable here or one more constant here that will be of type int, and that's going to equal red, union, green, union, blue, union, yellow, union, black. And now we can print color.all at the bottom, and I'll remove all of that. And what we will get back are all of the colors. And we can also get the value back, which will be the sum of all of the values of all of the colors. And we can still perform all the basic operations, such as checking whether color.red is in caller.all. And if we were to run this, it should return true because caller.red is in this combination. Caller.all is nothing but a combination of all of the constants. So yeah, to sum it up, if you ever have a fixed set of options that you want to use in your functionality, opt in for an enum. Very quickly, we can do something such as class state. And all we're going to do here is type in, oh, actually first I should inherit, so enum. And then we can type in on of type integer equals zero. 
and off, or actually I hate that, I really prefer to have off being zero and on being one. And then with this enum, we can create a lamp. So here we can type in switch of type state, and that can equal state dot off. Then we can perform the check. We can type in match switch case state dot on and print the lamp is turned on case state dot off print the lamp is turned off and in any other case we'll just print your lamp is possessed and now when we run this our lamp should be turned off because that's what we defined to happen once we provide that constant of the lamp being turned off. The state was set to off. And once again, we only have two options here and it's hard to mess up when we have options. So we have state.on and state.off. So now if we were to type in state.on, we should get that the lamp is turned on. If we were to type in anything else, such as whatever that is, we'll get back that our lamp is possessed. It's not going to stop us from running the script because Python is very lenient when it comes to inserting the wrong type, but it will give us that unexpected behavior. So with our enum, it just makes it much easier to select the correct options or to select the only options. But yeah, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below whether there's something you're still confused about regarding enums or whether I accidentally left something out. I would love to hear about it in the comment section down below. But otherwise, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.